okay good morning students so today we'll start with phylum echinodermata the ninth phylum okay Phylum Echinodermata. Right. So, what is the common name of this phylum? We start every phylum with uh, you know its common name. So, what does Echinodermata mean? Okay. So, the common name is based on the name of the phylum. Okay. So, Echino means spiny. Derm means skin. So, these are spiny skinned. Animals. So, common name Piney Kind Animals. So spiny skinned animals. Now, what is their habitat? Habitat is they are exclusively marine. So generally, you know, as you move from porifera to higher phylums like arthropoda okay and other phylums they start to become terrestrial but here you know mollusca and echinodermata so these phylums are still aquatic and in that also echinodermata is exclusively marine at least some molluscans are terrestrial whereas echinodermata it is completely aquatic and exclusively marine so that is one of the peculiarities of phylum echinodermata Right now, there is a note point here. Okay, the note point is that these are the first non chordate deuterostomes. Right. So, what do you mean by deuterostomes? These are animals in which blastopore becomes anus. Anus. Right. So, in the previous phylums, okay, uh, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca. In these three phylums, blastopore was developing into mouth. So, what did you yeah. call them? Protostomes. Okay. Yeah. So, these are the first non-chordate deuterostomes. Echinodermata. So I have told you there are you know two other phylums where you see key changes in the animal body plan. You remember which are those phylums? One is platyhelminthes, where you know bilateral symmetry starts and uh, three germ layers appear. Okay. The next phylum was Annelida, where segmentation starts. Okay. Now third such phylum where you see most of the new things coming into the animal body is the phylum. Echinodermata. Okay, like this is the first, they are the first deuterostomes where blastopore becomes anus. In the previous three phylums, Anilida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, blastopore used to become mouth there. So they were called protosomes. So this is the note point here. Right now, let us see what are the different uh, features of this phylum echinodermata right so starting with the level of organization what is the level of organization organ system yeah organ system 
level of organization. So I've been reminding you that the organ system level of organization starts from Lati helminthes is onwards and it continues without break till phylum cordata. Okay, so organ system level of organization. Right, what about number of germ layers? Three germ layers. Yeah, three germ layers. So that also starts from phylum platyhelminthes and continues without any exceptions Cordata. or breaks up to phylum chordata. Yes. So number of germ layers. I'll not write the number here. I'll write triploblastic. I hope you can understand when I write triploblastic. What does it mean? Right. So they are. Triploblastic animals. Body symmetry, next feature. With respect to body symmetry, there is a note point here. Okay, so body symmetry. Let me give it to you as a note point here. Okay, so this is the only phylum where animal shows two body symmetries. Same animal shows or exhibits. Two body symmetries. Okay, this is that phylum, Echinodermata. Okay, so here I'll give you this as a note point. Echinoderms exhibit Two body symmetries. Okay, right. So in larval stage, they are bilateral. Yeah, they, they, they exhibit bilateral symmetry. Okay. Next in other stage, they exhibit what symmetry? Radial symmetry. Radial. Yeah, in other stage, they exhibit radial symmetry. Now, which is primary stage among these two? Oops, larval stage. Yeah, larval stage is primary stage. Um, um, so can we say echinoderms are primarily bilaterally symmetrical? Can we say say this statement? Yes, we can. Okay, they are primarily bilaterally symmetrical because in larval stage, which is the primary stage, they exhibit bilateral symmetry. So similarly, we can also make this statement that echinoderms are secondarily radially symmetrical. Yes or no? Because adult stage is also known as what stage? What stage? Secondary, Secondary, stage. Stage. Secondary stage. Right. So these note points are there in the uh, introduction itself, in the basis of classification while I was explaining you about CELO, about the body symmetry, I have given you this note point. Okay. Right, so this is about body symmetry. Okay, right. And also, you know, there is another important point. They exhibit pentamerous symmetry. So body parts are arranged as, you know, five, five, yeah, as five repeated units. So th that is the sec next note point that I'm going to give you. Echinoderms exhibit. Pentamerous symmetry. So, 
body parts are repeated you know how many times five times for example you take starfish so there are how many arms in starfish five five, five. arms yeah so that is what is meaning of penta nearest right so next what about segmentation accent segmentation appears from which phylum and then later onwards right so which all phylum show segmentation phylum chordata okay so mollusca echinodermata i mean between you they do not show segment so segmentation is absent segmentation or metamerism is absent right so next feature is endoskeleton so echinoderms have endoskeleton derived from mesoderm and it is in the form of bony plates which is present under the skin in a layer called dermis so this is the next feature of echinodermata so it has endoskeleton derived from which germ layer mesoderm Hmm. In the form of, what does this endoskeleton look like? Calcareous ossicles or bony plates. Okay. In the form of calcareous ossicles. Okay, or bony plates located in dermis of the skin. Okay. Sir, uh, uh, epidermis and dermis same, sir. Epidermis is the upper part. Okay, the lower connective tissue layer is called as dermis. Okay, sir. Okay, right. So this is about the endoskeleton. What about coelom? Next feature is coelom. Enterocoelom. Yeah. So coelom is present. They are u coelomates. What type of u coelomates? Enterocoelomates. Size of coelomates or enterocoelomates? Enterocoelomates. Hmm. Right. So there is a note point that I gave you, which. Uh, associates the fate of blastopore with the mode of formation of coelom there is a note point you remember all protostomes are in all protostomes what is the mode of formation of coelom by splitting of band of mesoderm okay so that is why i told you all protostomes are cytosilomates and all deuterostomes are enterocoelomates okay so we'll go back to the first uh, you know note point that i gave you that they are first non chordate deuterostomes to this i would also like to add okay and they are also what because all deuterostomes are enterocoelomates can we write enterocoelomates here yes we can so they are first non chordate deuterostomes and enterocoelo Mates. Is this clear to you? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. So coelom is they are eucoelomates, and the mode of formation of coelom is you know it appears as outpouches from alimentary canal. So we call them as enterocoelomates. Right. So that is about the coelom. I'll also come to the previous one. You know. What is the fate of blastopore here? 
anus yes state of blastopore right so what does blastopore become here it becomes mouth or anus anus it becomes anus right so what do you call these animals where blastopore turns into anus deuterostomes deuterostomes right so i have covered it already in the first note point they are that they are the first deuterostomes but anyways i'll also mention it here so fate of blastopore deutero Stomes. Okay, where blastopore turns into anus, and also remember there is another way of you know understanding the word deuterostomes. In deuterostomes, which opening of the alimentary canal forms first? Mouth or anus? Anus. Anus forms first. So it is not only that. blastopore becomes uh, you know the anus but that opening called blastopore becomes the first opening of alimentary canal so here anus becomes the first opening in protostomes mouth becomes the first opening of the alimentary canal so you have to remember it in you know terms of uh, what is the first opening in protostomes and deuterostomes also right now what is the most distinctive feature of echinodermata characteristic feature like you know for each phylum i have told you one characteristic feature poriferans you know tell me the characteristic feature identifying feature porifera mm -hmm. canal system is it not porifera canal system nidaria Excuse me, sir. There is some disturbance in your voice. No, sir. It is fine for us. Clear, yeah, sir. It's ah. Uh, so it will be you know uh, based on your uh, network quality, you might have okay. some issue. Okay. So I'll I'll get to know if two or three people tell you know the same thing, then I can understand. Huh? Okay. So what is the characteristic feature of porifera? Canal system. system. Yeah. Uh, characteristic system. feature of snideria. metagenesis ah uh, not metagenesis snidocytes stinging cells okay the yeah, characteristic feature of stenophora bioluminescence bioluminescence yes bioluminescence characteristic feature of platyhelminthes dorso ventrally flat body okay dorso ventrally flat body characteristic feature of uh, uh ascalminthes tube they are generally endoparasites okay endoparasites there is no such special feature there okay next characteristic feature of uh, annelida most distinctive feature segmentation segmented because that is the first phylum where you start, start to see segmentation okay metamerism next characteristic feature of arthropoda podomyes jointed appendages jointed appendages or jointed legs that is what the name arthropoda is derived from okay jointed appendages characteristic feature of uh, mollusca visceral mass uh, no generally you know we say they are soft bodied animals covered with shell okay so that is a characteristic characteristic feature coming to characteristic feature of annelida sorry echinodermata That is what I am going to tell you. Okay, so I'll give you all. Yeah, water vascular. Okay, characteristic feature of echinodermata is water vascular system. So I'll mention it as most distinctive feature. Okay, it is water. vascular system okay now what are the functions of water vascular system in what way does it help the echinoderm okay so functions are see this water vascular system you know 
it is almost similar to the canal system of sponges almost similar to. okay so this uh, takes water from its surrounding because both poriferans and echinoderms are exclusively marine there is water around them so it takes water from the surrounding flushes it flushes that water through the animal body so there in sponges it is a canal system here it is water vascular system and then the water exits from the animal body in sponges it exits through osculum in uh, echinoderms it exists through tiny pores uh, tubes called tube feet is it clear to you so it is just a system of taking water from outside to inside the animal body and then flushing it out from the animal body same as uh, what you saw in case of poriferans okay right so in what way does it help the animal body so functions so it helps in transportation of substances the circulatory system is very poor in echinoderms if it is there it is open circulatory system with poor, with very poor you know uh, less developed heart okay so most of the transportation is performed by this water vascular system so when water flows through animal body it uh, carries substances from one place to another place also transportation of gases dissolved gases yes transportation of dissolved gases like oxygen carbon dioxide okay so it is almost functioning like blood here because circulatory system is not well developed then food capturing and then locomotion so when water is you know uh, flushed out of the animal body through tiny tubes called what is the name that i told you tube feet i'm going to show you it shortly okay so when water is flushed out from the animal body through these many tiny tube feet then there is a jet created so that jet will push the animal in the opposite direction so that is how animal moves making use of the water jet created by the water vascular system so these are all the functions of water vascular system in echinodermata any doubts here any doubts no sir okay so now we'll move on to the different organ systems in echinoderm starting with the digestive system right so is there digestive system present first of all is it there yes present and it is what type of digestive system complete or incomplete complete complete digestive system okay so there are alimentary canal has two opening anterior opening is called mouth posterior opening is called anus so present and complete type with mouth and anus right now what is the location of mouth and location of anus so mouth is located on ventral side anus is located on dorsal side. dorsal side. generally you know you would expect mouth to be on the anterior anterior means dorsal so you know that is that is what we think but it is not so so mouth is located on ventral side and anus located on dorsal side so this is the location of mouth and anus right now there is a chewing apparatus here you remember uh, 
about radula in the previous phylum was it yes or no yes. yeah so similar to radula which helps the animal to you know uh, bite the food into pieces there is a similar chewing organ in echinoderms so that chewing organ is called aristotle's lantern Aristotle's lantern is the chewing organ or apparatus in echinoderms. Okay, similar to radula of molluscans. So this is about the digestive system in echinoderms. Now the next organ system is circulatory system. But you know I have told you already. circulatory system is poorly developed so let us see how exchange of gases takes place so i would not mention you know let me write about circulatory system so circulatory system poorly developed okay if it is there it is a what type open type so open type circulatory system heart and blood vessels are poorly developed so that i'll write it here itself poorly developed heart and blood vessels okay so this is a circulatory system in molluscans right then how does exchange of gases takes place so structures which are involved in exchange of gases are okay tube feet so yes any doubts no sir no doubts ah yes yes what's your doubt sir so, like uh, last week portion is also we have done for this week's test now sir last week's portion last week portion is also we are having for this week's uh, test now sir it is there in the syllabus you know it has it has come to you it is there in the group like no sir last week uh, like this it continues for the following week sir the previous portions also will be included from the starting in the following tests No, I am not understanding what what you are asking. Uh, no, sir, I am asking like last week portions we are having for this week test, and uh, for the following test also the before weeks and uh, portions will also be included. I am asking. Sir. No, no, we cannot predict anything. What what they last, how it will come, we cannot predict. Hmm? Okay. So we sir. don't know what will happen. So next week, you know, we don't know. Hmm? Okay, sir. So till it is till phylum arthropoda, we have to prepare okay. for phylum arthropoda. So that is all we know because we don't know what they last next or you know, we can't predict. It. It, it all depends on what comes from you know from the central office. So that is all we know. Okay, right. So exchange of gases. Yes, sir. Yeah, by tube feet. So tube feet are part of water vascular system. So I'll write it here. are part of water vascular 
system okay so they help in exchange of gases in addition to tube feet you know in some echinoderms you also have uh, structures called cloacal respiratory tree okay by tube feet and cloacal respiratory tree okay so these are involved in exchange of gases right so after circulatory system excretory system now there is no special excretory structure or excretory organ then how does excretion takes place by simple diffusion after remember this whenever there is no dedicated or special organ or structure for a particular process you know it occurs by simple diffusion many a times you know you don't when you don't have respiratory structures like gills or lungs in sponges how, how does respiratory exchange of gases take place there by diffusion of gases even excretion also in sponges occurs by simple diffusion okay into the surrounding water so generally in marine animals or aquatic animals if there is no dedicated structure or organ for a particular process it simply occurs by diffusion of that substance from either water into the body if it is something like gases or if it is something like excretory waste then it diffuses from the body into the surrounding water okay so that is the most simplest thing which would work if there is no dedicated structure or organ in animal body for any particular function so excretion no special structure and occurs by simple diffusion into the surrounding water okay so that is how excretion takes place sir Hmm. Sir, how tube feet help in exchange of gases? I'll show you tube feet. Okay, I'll show you how it helps in locomotion. Okay, yes. then you will get an idea. What are tube feet? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. Next is nervous system. right so here you know you have a circum oral nerve ring so we have come across you know nerve rings from phylum ascalminthes onwards okay ascalminthes annelida okay there was nerve ring either it is the circum pharyngeal nerve ring in uh, annelida and arthropoda or it is circum esophageal nerve ring like in mollusca so here you have circum oral nerve ring so oral means oral refers to the mouth so around mouth there is a ring which represents the nervous system okay so nervous system represented by circum oral nerve ring okay and from this nerve ring you have nerves which are radiating into the five repeated units like five arms in case of starfish so i'll draw an outline of starfish here you know to show you how the nerve ring radiates so these are the five radiating arms of a starfish
so mouth is here on the ventral surface okay so around this mouth you have a ring which is circum oral ring from this circum oral ring you have five nerves which radiate into each arm like this so that is what represents the nervous system in echinoderm so i am showing you this nervous system taking example of starfish which is a typical echinoderm okay so this is circum oral nerve ring okay and uh, these are the nerves which are radiating from the nerve ring to the five arms of the animal body so these are radiating nerves okay nervous system in echinoderms any doubts here yeah but there is no structure like brain here so brain is absent so i write it here brain is absent so no well developed structure like brain here okay right so next comes the reproductive system yeah so these echinoderms reproduce sexually so there is sexual reproduction okay the sexes are separate here what is the term that you use to mention dioecious. separate dioecious dioecious another term what is another term yes please there is another terminology unisexual okay unisexual or dioecious so separate sexes so i would write in the bracket unisexual or dioecious right but there is no sexual dimorphism what do you understand from this morphologically they are similar ah from external appearance you cannot differentiate between male echinodermata and female echinodermata okay there is no way you can know it from their appearance their external appearance looks identical that is why no sexual dimorphism you cannot differentiate between a male and female just by its appearance right fertilization i have told you in aquatic forms generally fertilization is external okay so fertilization is external
okay but this is not a rule can you give me one exception for this earthworms no no the no. animal has to be marine aquatic okay but it should show internal fertilization go back to the first phylum first phylum poriferans what is the fertilization in poriferans poriferans are aquatic exclusively marine what is the fertilization there internal internal fertilization so fertilization is taking place inside spongiosteel okay so that is exception now generally fertilization is uh, internal in terrestrial animals can you give me exception for this fertilization is internal in terrestrial animals but you know it is not a rule can you give me exception for this you have studied this animal in detail you remember arthwa mm, what is the fertilization in arthwa external yes external so arthwa is terrestrial but still fertilization is external so like this you have you know few exceptions but the general rule is aquatic forms show external fertilization in the medium called water around them and the terrestrial forms show internal fertilization is it clear to you right what about development next feature development indirect indirect development so development is indirect so indirect means there is larval stage okay and here larva is free swimming larva so free swimming larva okay now coming to this uh, node point and this node point is about regeneration in echinoderms so echinoderms possess remarkable ability of regeneration in which other phylums do we come across uh, regeneration platyhelminthes you know you come from the first phylum you know porifera yes poriferans so porifera first phylum so i'll just write down the number here okay porifera nidaria yes there is regeneration in nidarians also hydra you take there is regeneration okay nidaria then platyhelminthes annelida annelida is which phylum sixth phylum okay and then you have the present phylum which is ninth phylum so this is how you know i remember if it is difficult for you to you know associate uh, phylums with a particular feature you know this is how you can do this is what you can do so somewhere you know you can write down all the features and below that you can write down these numbers but you know, the only thing is you can memorize these numbers easily hmm? but the only thing is you should know what is one what is two you should know the code so the coding is you know i have followed the ncrt sequence first phylum porifera 11th phylum chordata so i have given numbers for these phylum so if you can remember 1 2 4 6 9 if you can associate this with the regeneration and that is all over so if at all you come across if you ask the general features of a particular phylum then you can you know recollect what are you know features are associated with that particular phylum i hope you are understanding so this is one simple technique to you know remember remember the features found in which phylum okay right so echinoderms exhibit remarkable power of 
regeneration. Right, so that's the note point. Any doubts here? No, sir. No, okay. No, sir. Right, so there is a small, you know, video clip that I want you to see. Yeah, so here you can see the tube pits. So I'm showing you the starfishes here, and you can see the tube feet in these starfishes. Sir? Yeah. Have you started to show yet, sir? I'm not able to see in my screen. No, not yet started. I have not yet started. Okay, sir. Right. Can you see there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Yeah, those, those, you know, structures are the tube feet. Yeah, those tiny ones. Yeah, those are the tubes, the tiny ones. Sea stars and other echinoderms are extremely important to the biodiversity of our oceans. Invertebrates make up around 95% of animals in the ocean, so they are the most common major group. And starfish are a very important predator in the shallow ecosystem. They eat basically anything that they come across. Their feeding activities help to control the ecosystem. They are a keystone species. If that species is affected, it's going to have a disproportionately greater effect on the whole ecosystem because you're removing a key component. So next time you see a starfish, take a moment to reflect on both their beauty and their importance to life on this planet. Yeah, so did you, did you see those tiny tubes coming out from the arms of the starfish on the ventral side? Yes, sir. Those, those were the tube feet. Okay, so they are part of the water vascular system. So I'll share with you one, uh, one picture of the water vascular system in starfish. Okay, you have to give me just a uh, few minutes. I'll share uh, that diagram with you. So 
you see this this is a the water vascular system which is present in a starfish so this is the inlet from which the water enters into the water vascular system sir we can see only starfish picture yeah that's what wait yeah right so this is the inlet okay it is called madreporite so this sucks water inside this ring okay this is called ring canal okay so water enters into the water vascular system through this structure called madreporite and then it goes into this ring canal from ring canal you know you have five tubes which are radiating into the five arms of the starfish are you able to see so yeah, so yeah those canals which are radiating into the arms of the starfish are called radial canals they are what canals radial canals so from ra ra uh, what is that ring canal you have radial canals radiating into the five arms and from this radial canal you have horizontal canals you know those you can't see here yeah you can't see them there are horizontal canals and those canals lead into these uh, tubes which i which i showed you just you know uh, in the previous uh, video you saw those tiny tubes right coming on the ventral side they were numerous so those are these tube tube feet okay these are the tube feet fine right? did you understand right so yes, here you don't see that here you know here you don't have an outline of starfish it is just the canal system that you see in the starfish so it is this is madreporite through which water enters into the ring canal okay from ring canals water enters into the radial canals so these radial canals are in the arms of the starfish and from each radial canal there is a horizontal tube here do you see that horizontal tube that horizontal tube enters into you know this part which is what is called as what are these tube feet right so the tube feet is slightly swollen on the anterior end you see here so those are called as ampulla what are they called so this is the structure of tube feet so this swollen upper part is called ampulla so when water enters into this horizontal canal what is the name given to the horizontal canal lateral canal actually we are not teaching you canal system but since this is you, know, you ask me you know, some questions i have to show you this it is not there in the series. okay right so these are called lateral canals so from lateral canal water enters into the tube feet so when ampulla you know squeezes then the water enters as a jet into the podium and then comes out so that jet of water it is what propels the animal in the opposite direction you know uh, what is it uh, newton's uh, third law of motion every action has an equal and opposite reaction okay so if suppose the water jets downwards the animal will be pushed upwards so if suppose the, all the tube feet face this side then the animal is you know pushed on the opposite side so that is how tube feet you know help in locomotion and uh, anything that water carries into this canal system you know it gets circulated throughout the body of the echinoderm so it also helps in circulation locomotion and if there are any tiny food particles which are entering you know they get uh, captured inside so you have digestive system and everything inside so that is how echinoderm is seen is it okay yes sir yeah. so this is the canal system in echinoderm so how exactly tube feet uh, help in circulation so you ask me that also so that is little difficult right now i cannot tell you but i can tell you what i can tell you is there is diffusion involved here okay so through diffusion tube feet help in exchange of gases
Sir, I'm not able to hear your audio. Ah. Yes. Yeah, anything else? People have any doubt or is it over? Uh, sir, in the video we saw the starfish now, sir. Yes, that was starfish, what I showed you in the video. The circuming was not present in that, sir. It was not visible to us. Huh? So the ring structure, sir. Huh? Uh, in the ring structure was not visible to us when we saw the video. No, this will not be visible. This is inside. This is all inside. You can't see it. So here we, we are just showing you the water vascular system. Which one? This one. What part was not visible? No, no. I was just trying to show you the tube feeds. That's all. Okay. Yes, From the arm, you know, all the, the that was shown in the video were the tube feeds. Numerous, tiny, you know. These structures called tube feeds on the ventral side of the arm of the starfish. Okay, and they are able to move also like this. So, in whichever direction they face, in the opposite direction the body gets propelled. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, classification of uh, echinoderma in tomorrow's class. So, tomorrow we are taking up hemichordata and classification of hemichordata. There are only two classes. So this uh, phylum echinodermata has uh, five classes. So tomorrow we'll start with the classification of echinodermata, five classes, and then general features, characteristics of phylum hemichordata, and then classification where there are two classes for hemichordata. Okay, so that way we'll finish the hemichordata tomorrow and uh, Friday, Saturday. We'll see Friday. Let's take class for what we'll see, but uh, Saturday definitely we'll have one revision MCQ revisions. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, you know, are you solving MCQs? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you solving? How many exercises have you solved? At least exercise one have you solved? Yes, sir. Exercise yes, sir. one. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. How many yes, questions? Sir. How many questions in exercise one? I want to make sure that you are solving. If you don't solve, you know, you can't score a good marks. It is not at all possible. It is not at all possible. Just by listening to class, you, can, you cannot score. Okay, many, many students have scored 180 out of 180. Do you know that? Okay, many yes, of you have scored. Yes, it is possible. Provided, you know, you work hard. So please solve the MCQs, okay? And send me the difficult ones. Please mark the difficult ones so that, you know, Friday, Saturday, when I take uh, your revision classes, you specifically ask me those questions. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah, please do that. Please, that is very important. Along with listening to classes and taking notes, MCQs are very important. So because most of the questions are going to come from there. From the MCQs given in your book. Okay, so they might twist it a little bit and ask you. So those are the model questions. So you have to read those questions. You have to solve those questions. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, so, yeah, my assignment is exercise one up to today's phylum. You try to solve. So solve till arthropoda. Today we have taken echinodermata. It's not there. So till arthropoda because till uh, Four phylums, Plati Helminthes, there are only 60 questions. Okay, so hardly we'll have some uh, 80 questions, 80 small MCQs. Exercise one is very simple. You have to solve that, and you know, there are many more exercises. There is exercise two, three, and four also. So, this is what is something that all of you should do. Is it clear to you? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Right then, okay. So, see you tomorrow. Any doubts, let me know. Huh? Let me know on WhatsApp if you have any doubts. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay, then. See you tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Okay. Take care. Bye.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.